Hey everybody, it's Noam Jim, and I am in the hospital right now. It's day five of being in the hospital. I had surgery last Thursday. Uh, what was supposed to be a relatively quick and simple in and out outpatient surgery that turned into kind of a rather lengthy hospital stay here now because I am waiting for my insurance company to tell me I can take one of those home. That right there is a wound vac and that is currently hooked up to my leg, uh, helping my wound on my stump that had not healed for the last year and a half to get healed and to get better. Uh, we're waiting for uh, a wound back to come or approval for me to have one at home. And once that approval is given, I'll be able to go home with a wound back and uh, recuperate at home. But for right now, I'm in the hospital. And uh, today was dressing change day. So I had an actual wound care nurse who did the dressing change who let me do a video of how it was actually done. And so for anybody who's interested in how a wound vac dressing change is done on an amputated stump, uh, I've got stem cells inside of an incision. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Not too gory. I don't think it's going to gross anybody out, but just, you know, you will see some staples being pulled out and you'll see uh, the wound, uh, which has a skin graft in it, uh, but no blood. So anyway, if you want to watch it, keep watching. If not, just um, press like anyway and share this video to your friends and subscribe to the channel and do that anyway. And for everybody else who wants to watch the actual wound care, here we go. So, hey guys, it's Noam Jim and I am in the hospital. I've been here for, I think four days now. And, um, this is the wound that uh, my doctor opened up. It hadn't healed. It's been over a year, almost a year and a half since the surgery. And the wound got some MRSA in it and um, inflammation and it never did really heal. So he cut the whole wound, the hardness out and put some stem cells um, down in there. That's a skin graft that we're looking at. And uh, right now, uh, the wound care nurse is going to take the staples out and uh, so we'll get a video of her taking the staples out and you can just see what that kind of looks like. And then um, the next thing we will do is have the wound back put back on, which I've had the wound back on now since Thursday. Um, the pain has been rather intense at times. Um, I think mostly it has, to, it has been having to do with the staples and the, um, the covering that they put over the wound, but um, my covering's going to be gone and the staples are coming out, so I don't think they're going to be pulled, sir. So let's go ahead and see what we're going to do. We're going to cut some staples out. Why don't we start with that one right yeah, there? Yeah, perfect. One. That's cool. That didn't hurt at all. Yeah. I did have some some uh, morphine given to me because the one that got yanked out mm -hmm. actually hurt pretty bad <laughs> there we go. so that's cool for anybody who's not seen how a staple remover works that is a staple remover mm -hmm. and um it just kind of pulls the staple out and sometimes they hurt sometimes they don't i've had a lot of staples over the last couple of years But as you okay. see, it just kind of bends it. bends it out. So it comes out and makes it into a nice yeah. little wound. Yeah. So the wound looks good. There's no indication of any in infection. There's no inflammation, which is awesome. And I do have my stump shrinkers this time. So we'll be able to control the edema that we had last time that wasn't controlled. So now you are putting on... Uh, the adapt it. The adapt which is um, for people who don't know, what is what is that? It's like a oil emulsion dressing. Okay. Um, it kind of helps keep it nice and moist, so it doesn't you know, get all dry and bother and irritate you. Cool. Yeah. So the adaptics can be put on, and then the wound vac goes over that. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've learned. Um, with the wound back is the sponge that's there is not supposed to touch your skin because uh, it will irritate the skin 
um, very badly. So you're not supposed to touch the skin with the sponge. I'm going to change the lens here, get a little bit wider so we can see what's going on. Um, we have got to measure the wound. Mm -hmm. That's another thing you got to do. That. But as you can see, the wound actually looks really good. I'm, I'm very, uh, I don't want to say excited, but I'm, I'm very happy to see how it looks and how it's not as painful as I thought it would be. The pain that I was experiencing, I think was from the adaptic that was stapled to my skin. And every time I moved, it would kind of yank the, sta the staples a little bit. So here's the, the foam and um, she will just uh, cut it. I think it's gonna be even smaller this time. Yeah, so um, I, I think I made a video of wound care before uh, with with the wound back, but the idea is is that you lay this foam over the wound, and then the suction cup gets put over it with a tube, and the wound back actually creates a negative pressure, which draws fluid out of the the wound to help it drain. Uh, mine's not got much drainage, actually none. Um, but it also, that negative pressure will bring blood flow and help with oxygenation. And obviously you need to have oxygen in order to heal. And um, the way that the flap is done when they do the, the uh, amputation is the skin from behind the leg is brought back up over here. And about where my thumb is, that's where the scar was for where all the skin from behind my calf was brought forward and underneath. So there's not much blood flow coming from here and all the veins are deep and the capillaries are uh, in the subcutaneous tissue. So to get blood flow up towards the surface, you don't have blood flow. The, the oxygen just has to kind of diffuse up there. So if you, um, put vacuum therapy on these uh, um, here that will help pull that oxygen up in there another way we could make this heal better is to put uh, put me into a hyperbaric chamber um, which most people think of a hy hyperbaric chamber is a place that you would put a diver who's got the bends uh, I know when I first started studying hyperbaric medicine in medical school that's what I thought I thought we're going to be fixing bent divers, which we did. We, we fixed a lot of bent divers, but uh, it's also great for wound care. Um, and I hope that the Medicaid insurance will actually um, approve me to have hyperbaric therapy because I know with hyperbarics, this wound will heal and uh, won't be an issue. And I won't have to worry about possibly losing more of my leg, which is uh, right now a definite possibility um, way low on the probability but it is a possibility so uh, Kyla let's talk a little bit here about what are you doing and why so right now I'm just putting on the top dressing which sometimes it's a little finicky it's a little tricky to get on there but I'm just getting this on this is like gonna maintain the negative pressure seal and it's gonna allow it to actually suck in. There we go. And then if you can lift it up just a little bit. There we go. I found um, that this uh, dressing actually bit. also works really good uh, when you have a wound that just has a dressing on it and you need to keep it dry when you take a shower. Um, just putting the wound back uh, sticker on top of that dressing helps keep it dry. And um, I think I, Kyla, I told you that the other day and mm -hmm. you hadn't heard that before. Yeah. But it, it, it does work. Yeah, and actually I recently just got a new tattoo and they just put one of these things on it. I was like, oh, interesting. That kept the tattoo nice and clean while it was healing, and they wanted you to keep it on for like five days. So, could you take a shower then? Mm hmm. Yep. All right. And then we're gonna 
just kind of patch up all the little spots that I didn't do so good at with keeping wrinkle free. do one just like right across here just in case. So again this will have the wound vac put on it and then the um, the vacuum pump will give uh, 125 millimeters of mercury's worth of negative pressure on the wound and I actually should probably do some research and see why it's 125 millimeters of mercury. I don't even know. <laughs> That's a good I'm question. Sure I don't there's know. a reason. Sometimes they have it set to 125, other times it's only at a hundred. So it kind of depends, but then we're gonna attach this little piece, which is the actual tubing. Close to be right, being ready here. It's not an exact science. I found that out. I thought that when I did this the first time, it would have to be, you know, done exactly right. But um, it's more of an art form. Mm -hmm. More arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. You're right. You said that the other day. Mm -hmm. Whatever works works. like we might have some pieces that we have to patch up a little bit but I'm just going to turn it on there it goes look at that beautiful so now we'll put some measurements on here so Kyle is writing out uh, what to put on the sticker and there's the mess that's left over. Uh, this is always my least favorite part is having to clean up the mess when I do the wound back change at home because without fingers, it's really tough to pick all that stuff up. But I can do it. Beautiful. And there we go. <laughs> Everything's good. So, hey guys, thanks for watching this and hope you learned something and I hope that uh, my daughter Hope can see what how this was done and uh, be able to help me when I get home. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks.